Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Today, we're on the last paddock. Um, we'll be leaving. Uh, this is our lifetime lease farm. So, we used to call this the uh, brush paddock, then we named it the clover paddock. Anyway, that's kind of stuck in the clover paddock. And um, we unrolled two bales of hay in here this morning, and they got a little piece of stockpile on the back end of this. Matter of fact, uh, there's quite a few of them down there just eating stockpile. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's looking pretty good. I mean, there's pretty good ground cover in here. We didn't take it down too short. And uh, this will come back nice in the spring. And it's right next to our, um, well, you can just see, it's next to our civil pasture. <clears throat> and last night, um, we unrolled a couple bales in the civil pasture where we could get our bale unroller in. And uh, so we brought some carbon in here and the cows were, uh, where this wire is, they were kind of locked on that. And the water's right over here. We've got a tank set up. I'm gonna show you. So this was timber. Uh, a year ago, we started working on this. I think it was in January or February. This is an old bulldoze pile right here. They like, they like them. <laughs> the cows like bulldozer piles. Anyway, you can still see the stumps are everywhere. Uh, this was uh, solid timber. And uh, it looked like that way over yonder. Anyway, we, we brought our carbon source in for the first time yesterday. And boy, the cattle did a really nice job. So this was all oak leaves. This was solid oak leaves <clears throat> before we unrolled the hay. And uh, well, I can show you. You can see where we didn't unroll the hay. <clears throat> That's what it looked like. Okay, so there's no grass going to grow on that. <clears throat> there's our firewood piles. That we <clears throat> finally got all that down there. Is, must be 30 pickup loads of firewood over there. <clears throat> and uh, we got about 15 saw logs over there. And then we hauled out a thousand shiitake mushroom logs out of here. And you can see that bale on roller. <laughs> the boys went down through here. I mean, running over stumps. and I like what they left, though. The, the cows defecated on some of the hay. They, of course, they peed on it, stepped on it, and left, <clears throat> left a nice layer of carbon here to convert <clears throat> uh, Oakley's back to grass and of course they got some hoof hoof action in here chopped up all the oak leaves you can hardly see an oak leaf in here and they've been chopped up with their feet there they are today over yonder it's pretty cool taking animals into a previous timber which is no longer timber now this is civil we still got too many trees in here. And uh, these double trees like that, I'm oh, gonna knock some of those out. But you know, you gotta start somewhere and you can't do it all at once. I mean, there's just a lot of trees came out of here. This is a, I'm gonna get a new chain on my saw. That's when they cut the very, 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 very best. And that stump's coming off. I'm gonna knock that one off and that other one over there. You can't run a four-wheel over that. <laughs> but they really did a good job in here. I mean, this has all been head hay and rolled on. Look at, look at the manure in here. So be curious to see what this looks like. I mean, we took the bale and roller, went around this tree. There's no way you could do this with a pickup truck. 
or even a tractor. You can tell your tractor up coming in here. I mean, ran over that stump with a bailing roller. Of course, you're, you know, you got an ATV that you're pulling it with. And there's stumps all over in here. <clears throat> but the cows don't care about the stumps. Uh, the ATV and the bailing roller, they don't, it doesn't care about the stumps. Unless there's one like that. <laughs> We're going to knock that one off. There's actually a couple of pretty good pieces of firewood in that one. But this is our first stab at it from going from timber and converting it to grass. So what we started with is a fungal, fungal environment, all oak trees. I would say 98% of the trees in here are oak. And there was a few hickories, but not very many. And... Uh, so yeah, this is our first stab at it. The cows did an excellent job. Thank the cow herd for that. And uh, we took a fungal dominated area, something that grows uh, a lot of moss, mushrooms, toadstools, trees. And we brought in a bacteria source, which is the hay. And we unrolled it in the middle of the woods or what was woods. And then we let the cattle do their thing. Well, wow, folks, these, these manure pants are just beautiful. Look at that. This is January 22nd. We still got really nice manure piles. No protein lick. No nothing. Just, you know, unrolling a little bit of hay and keep them moving. Keeping them moving on our stock pile. Pretty cool that we can use that water system though. That's a this is a three quarter inch polyethylene line that uh, I actually trenched in from that hydrant over there. So it's being fed by a hydrant. When I got to the side of that hill, I couldn't trench down through this woods, so I just laid the pipe on top of the ground. And it's been in here for 20 23 years, and uh, you can't find the pipe anymore. It's just got a little bit of leaf litter and some dirt has been kicked on it by the cattle. And uh, it's working, look at that. They're drinking out of it. Now, you, if you ran this in the at night, which the boys did last night, um, Isaac pulled the siphon on this. And uh, he doesn't have the siphon going now. Here's where he hooked on to it, which is right there. It's a quick coupler above ground. And uh, just plugged it in and uh, ran it over here. So we're gonna have a mini, mini cattle drive tonight. Taking them out of here and going to the next farm. Our goal is Dots, which is our biggest farm. Oh, that's some good water. Look at that. The cows are standing on that uh, earth-moving tire sidewall. Or some of them are. That one's not. That other bigger cow is. Oh, look at them drink. Folks, water is the cheapest thing you can put in your cows. Make sure you provide good water. You're not going to have near i'm not saying you won't have any health issues but you're going to be uh severely reducing them by giving them good water and that goes with sheep too and goats <laughs> cows being a boss <clears throat> she won't do that very long she'll go back to eating here in a minute see there's four head drinking out of a I think there's 45 gallons of water in there. And we put this wire right here. Somebody asked the other day, well, how do you keep the cows from tromping on your hose? Well, that's how we do it. We run a hot wire over the top of it. They're not gonna stomp on that. They'll get shocked if they do. And the reason we put those fiberglass posts in there like that is if you don't, uh, those cows will drink that thing down Maybe get it half empty. 
you'll come out here and find that thing flipped upside down and now you got a mess. And you got a big water bill. What's that pretty little heifer? Both of those got calves sucking on them. Yep. Go up here on top, I'm gonna show you the stockpile we gave them. It's nothing to write home about that I noticed before I started shooting the video. There's a whole bunch of them over here eating on it. So it must not be too bad. Just remember, remember this, cows know best. Cows always know best. And that's another reason you gotta watch your animals. Heck, heck yeah, they're, there's a bunch of them over here on the stockpile. There's as many grazing stockpile as there is the hay. So this would have been a stockpile that was grazed clear, or the last time it was grazed was in November. <clears throat> Excuse me. Around uh, the end of October, first of November. Yep, it's looking pretty good. We can see where the line is right there. This is where the wire was. So this was given to him this morning. And uh, it's just, I've had, I've had a lot better stock, Paul, but I've had worse. And uh, don't tell the animals it's not any good because <laughs> they all think it's pretty good from the looks of it. They're all out here munching on it. I don't know, folks. You know, you get into the third week of January and your cows are still able to get out and forage and, and do this every day. And you're keeping them on clean ground. Um, it just does a lot to the cattle health and it does a lot to your bottom line. Not only in improved animal performance, but also not having to spend a lot of money to keep your animals on your farm. See, these cattle are working for us today. There's no hay out here. This is all stockpile. It's probably, I don't know, the tallest might be six to eight inches. And some of it's only three inches. But we're only gonna be here, uh, it's noon right now. We're gonna be moving them off here in four hours. And they were put on here at eight o'clock this morning so they'll be taken off at four o'clock. So they're not gonna be on here very long. And then once the cows are removed, uh, we will bring the sheep in here. They won't be lambing until May 1st. And the sheep will come in here and clean up a lot of the weeds and uh, whatever the cows didn't eat, the sheep will kind of clean up. They are a cleanup crew. They all seem pretty happy. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. And uh, before I do, I gotta show you a really pretty heifer. My goodness. Woo. That one looks like a movie star right there. Woo, golly. Folks, that's solid forage. And believe it or not, she's got a calf sucking on her. That's the first calf heifer. She had her first calf uh, last spring. And look at the condition on that little heifer. She's not a heifer anymore, she's a cow. She won't weigh over 850. She's got a calf sucking on her. We don't wean the calves off, not the heifers. We never take the heifer calves off. We let the cows wean them. So it happens in nature. And the bull calves, anything that's seven months old, by March 1st, those are taken off. We, we take them out of here. Because if we don't, we're going to be winter calving the next year. We do not want that. Man, that is a beautiful young cow. Now she's still going to grow some. She'll get a little taller. She's going to fill out. She's just a perfect size to me 
progress in this environment. If you're up north, you may want another 100 pounds on them. If you want to go down south, the, the deer in the south are always smaller than the ones up in Minnesota. So it just depends on your environment. But right here, our sweet spot is about 850 to 950 pound cow. I'll take a thousand pound, but I don't want any 12 to 1400 pound cow. They just can't make it on our thin soils out here. We've got very thin soil. All this land you're looking at around here, it's all been farmed. And uh, it was farmed at the turn of the century. So our topsoil is down the Mississippi Delta. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's what we, it's what we got to deal with, so. But you know what? The cows are doing good. We're doing good. And I'm going to get out of here and uh, got that sheep auction going. It's going to be uh, winding up on Wednesday night. There's uh, 80 bred ewe lambs that'll be uh, lambing in um, the 1st of, of May. Beautiful flock from down south. A good friend of ours. We've known him for many years. Actually bought sheep from him before and put some in our flock. They're just a good set of a good set of ewe lambs, and uh, they are going to be pregnancy tested, so they're guaranteed to be a lamb in there, or lambs might have twins. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here, uh, hit that subscribe button on the way out, and uh, we'll see you next time.